What is up you guys, it's your boy Pretty Boy Floyd. Um, this is going to be the first video of my fat loss series. It is going to be a series for around 24 weeks. Um, each week I'm going to be showing you guys progress pictures and whatnot. Uh, this first video, I'm actually going to go do a photo shoot with my barber uh, for a hair magazine. Um, today I'm just going to show you guys what kind of stuff I'm going to be eating. Um, in this vlog, I'm going to be showing you guys a uh, macronutrient breakdown. I'm just going to give you guys like a, a battle plan for my fat loss. Right now, we are on the way to do a photo shoot with my barber, I Am Creation Lords. Um, his Instagram will be down there. Also, we're going to get some behind the scenes of uh, the photo shoot so you guys can look at that. Just got my hair cut from him about an hour ago. I'll catch up with you guys later. Um, right now, we're just on our way to the photo shoot and we're going to get some behind the scenes of that. Hopefully, you guys will see some pictures from that photo shoot as well. So, yeah, see you in the next clip. You got it? Yeah. All right. What is up, you guys? Today is Friday. No, it's Thursday. Today is Thursday. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of go over my battle plan for this uh, fat loss. Um, my show is going to be June 27th, 2020. It's going to be in Williamsburg. I think it's going to be in Williamsburg. I don't know. But I'll put the flyer up there. I um, just want to walk you guys through uh, my nutrition plan, uh, my strength plan, and... Um, you know, it's, it's just the overall like fat loss plan, my overall fat loss plan, just my battle plan, how like certain tactics that I'm going to use, certain tools that I have in my toolbox that I'm going to pull out when the time is right. So I'm just going to get into that. So cardio wise, I'm doing cardio three times a week, moderate intensity, steady state. So for me, that's kind of like a uh, moderate jog. Uh, right now I'm doing an eight mile per hour run on a treadmill. I'm running about three miles. Uh, my coach gives me a calorie goal, so he says to hit 350 calories on a treadmill three times a week. So that's what I'm doing. I'm running on a treadmill eight miles per hour until I hit 350 calories. That usually takes me about 30 minutes. Um, so I'm scheduling my cardio days Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Right now, I try to uh, do cardio like on separate days I'm doing strength training just because my cardio frequency during the week isn't that heavy. So I'm gonna take full, like full advantage of that and I'm going to schedule my cardio days for the days I'm not doing any strength training uh, because I could be in a gym for like two hours doing cardio and strength training. So with that being said, I'm doing Monday, Wednesday, and Friday cardio. My strength days are going to be Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. So I'm going to be in the gym four days a week doing um, weightlifting. So, <clears throat> During this fat loss series, I'm going to be doing three types of measurements. Um, these three types of measurements will make sure that I am going in a positive direction with my fat loss. So the first one is the weight scale. Um, this is something that most people have, just the weight scale, um, just to see how much you weigh and, you know, in their heads. If the weight is going down, then our body fat is going down as well. But Sometimes that's not the case. There's a lot of variables that happen with weight. It could be water, food, um, like weight could be anything. Weight could be like the weight of your organs, weight of your bones, um, like how much food you had last night. So uh, this the weight scale, it is, a good, uh, it is a good way of measuring your progress, but it shouldn't be the only way of measuring your progress because there's gonna be a lot of times where you'll hit a stall where like you will see the same weight for like a week or you even go up like two or three pounds and then you'll be thinking that you're doing something wrong. And that's where we have these other two measurements come in. So the other two measurements that I'm talking about is progress pictures. I'm going to be taking a progress picture weekly for the next 20 weeks. And we're gonna start seeing some physical changes in my body just to make sure that everything is going the way I want it to because the most important thing is that you want to like the way that you look. Yeah, the number on a scale is a good indicator of your progress, but if you're 130 pounds and you look like shit, you know, that's not going to matter if you're like 150 pounds and you look really good. So the number on a scale, like I said, it's not the only measure of progress. Um, what really matters is your aesthetic and how you look on stage. So uh, the next measurement is tape measure. So I'm, mainly I'm going to be taking measurements of my 
waist. That's the only measurement that I'm going to be taking um, because that's the that's the main thing that I'm concerned about. So I took my measurement of my waist and it is a 27 inch. Um, I think I could probably get it down to a 24 or 25 during the summer. Uh, but other ways that you can measure is your arms and your legs. Why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> <laughs> Why'd you look at me like that? Because I said a 24? Yeah. <laughs> she doesn't like, she doesn't. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, it's cool. No, no, keep on recording. <laughs> she doesn't like that I have such a small waist, but I love it though. So, um, I haven't had a 24 inch waist since I was like 13. I had a 25. I had a 25 inch when I was like 21, 22, but I'm pretty sure I can get it down to a 24. But anyways, um, so yeah, those are the three types of measurements of progress. It is progress pictures that I'll be taking weekly, going on a weight scale and measuring my weight. I'm going to be measuring my weight daily and we're going to be averaging it, averaging it out every week. Third thing is tape measurements. So on your waist, legs, arms, or wherever you want to see um, progress. Uh, more than likely you want to do the waist because that's usually um, where you'll see the most change in is your waist. So just do that with a tape measure. Um, so here's how I'm going to be tracking data. Uh, with my food, I'm going to be using the MyFitnessPal. I'm also going to be using a food scale to be more accurate with my um, calories and whatnot. I could do a whole separate video on how to like teach you guys how to use a food scale and um, how... Uh, the calories on the nutrition box, uh, like, you, you know, I, never mind, I, I'm gonna just cut that. Uh, so yeah, the way I'm gonna measure food is using on my fitness pal app, and I'm going to be using a food scale to measure out my food, uh, just to be more accurate. And I can show you guys how to use the food scale and all that correctly in a separate video, but for now I'm just gonna talk about my, my battle plan real quick. Um, tracking my weight, I'm gonna be using the Happy Scale app, uh, this is a really good app because it can predict your low weigh-ins. Also, it can um, give you data points and, again, show you a like positive trend if you're trying to lose fat or a negative trend. Um, it's really helpful with that. It's just It basically just kind of um, gives you insight on your weight and whether or not like to tell you if you are on the right track or not. Um, it also has little milestones, too. So, like, um, you know, like you set little goals for yourself, like, if my um, goal was like to be 148.6 in the next five days, I could try to aim for that and like really be on my diet. Sort of makes it like a little game. So I like that about that app. <clears throat> Another way that I'm going to be tracking my weight is using my coach's weekly tracker. Um, he has a whole like separate thing that he's using. He's using like some Excel spreadsheet. So I'm going to give that data to him um, using his program. He just has like an Excel sheet uh, just to give him the information that he needs. So every week I need to check in with him. And um, yeah, uh, every week I'm also going to uh, measure my waist, see if it's getting smaller each week. If it doesn't get smaller each week, then no big deal. Like I said, as long as everything's in a positive trend, a lot of times your waist gonna go up, it's gonna go down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, but you just want to see it go down in a positive trend. The, be the, um, the best thing to see is just that your new high weigh-in isn't as high as it was. You are gonna have some high weigh-ins. You are gonna go up two, three pounds, but as long as it's not as high as when you started. So, yeah. So, um, breaking down this week's macros, this is just week one. Week one's calories are at 2,700. Uh, my macros are as follow. Uh, so my macros are 175 grams of protein, 370 grams of carbs, and 60 grams of fat. Um, on my training days and I have uh, one refeed day a week which is 175 grams of protein, 450 grams of carbs, and 60 grams of fats. Um, my coach had also gave me uh, macros for my off days which is 175 grams of protein, 330 grams of carbs, 60 grams of fat. But seeing that I go to the gym every day, I'm not going to use the off day macros. It's just mainly going to be the training day macros and then the refeed day macros. Uh, a refeed day is basically just having a little increase of food. Uh, it'll boost my metabolism up a little bit and um, slow down some metabolic adaptations that happen when you diet. So, so as for my macros throughout the entire prep, those are going to be determined by my coach. He's going to be playing it by ear. He's just going to like see how I'm looking in pictures, see how the weight is doing, and he's going to give me the macros according to my weight and how I'm looking. So uh, 
So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys my week one physique. I'm already uh, pretty lean. I uh, didn't really like go off the rail or anything like that. Like I try to stay relatively lean year round. Um, there was a time like that I like bulked up to like 160, but I looked a little bit too fluffy and I didn't really like that. So I try to stay around the low 150 range. Um, whenever like I saw the weight go up too much, I would like cut down on food a little bit just to stay in that 150 range because I don't want to like spend a lot of time losing fat. I want to be stage ready as soon as possible. Um, I feel like it's better to be, better to be prepared early than uh, to rush things and like have to starve yourself in the end. Um, but yeah, uh, as for supplements, right now I'm just taking whey protein. I don't do pre-workout because I'm pretty sensitive to caffeine. Uh, I used to do caffeine. Honestly, there's nothing wrong with caffeine. I actually think that caffeine really helps. Like if you if you're able to drink a monster or a coffee or a green tea or whatever. Um, that can really like hype you up to go to the gym whenever like you really don't feel like it because there are gonna be some days where you don't feel like it but um, during this prep and during this fat loss series I know there are gonna be some days that I don't feel like it but I just have to like you know just find it within me to go to the gym and I have to kind of take it seriously like I'm going to a job you know like you don't you don't always feel like going to your job but you but you need to because you know you want to make money it's the same thing with this it's just like you need to go to the gym because you want to be shredded <laughs> so it's just like you got that that same mindset um so as for supplements just whey protein um I'm thinking about getting fish oil and, and a multivitamin I'll get that soon probably in week two Okay, so after the workout, what I got was muscle milk, uh, 40 grams of protein, a non-dairy uh, protein shake, um, nine grams of carbs. <laughs> so it's got nine grams of carbs, two and a half grams of fat, 40 grams of protein, only one gram of sugar, so that's pretty good. Um, so another thing I got from CVS were the Sour Patch Kids. Every day, so every day I've been eating Sour Patch Kids, um, and my weight has still been on a good trend. Uh, I actually got the bigger bag of Sour Patch Kids. I usually only get the bag that's about like 360 calories per bag. This one, uh, I think has about 700 calories, but it's pure carbs. Um, I ate, so I was way under my calories yesterday, about a thousand calories under, um, I'm hoping to uh, fit in some more carbs. I only had about 170 grams of carbs and this has 174 grams of carbs in there. So I'm gonna get a head start on my carbs today and um, try not to eat under. So yeah. All right, so this clip, just a little sit down, talk. I just wanna have a face to face with you guys. I am 15 weeks out right now. I just wanna talk about this prep um, my intentions were to post a video every week showing you guys weekly updates, but um, there's just been a part of me that's just been uh, scared, pressured to put it on YouTube to, uh, y you know what it's like, to just put what you're doing out there to be judged by others. And when you already have you, you know, like yourself as your biggest critic and to have other people chime in and... Um, I guess put more pressure on you uh, gets pretty overwhelming so uh, yeah this is I mean starting a YouTube channel is already pretty overwhelming and having this much pressure on you having a lot of eyes on you and especially when you say that you're gonna do something and say hey I'm gonna do this it's it's like <laughs> like it's, it's a lot of pressure um, but uh, if you guys can get anything from this like I just want to help you guys out uh, I just want to help people out. Like I want to help people who want to lose weight, who want to look better, feel better, have better health. Um, well, this is competition prep, so this isn't necessarily about health, but um, it's more so, you know, about aesthetics and wanting to achieve what you what you want. And uh, yeah, so 15 weeks out right now. I'm just going to show you guys some physique updates. I'm going to show you guys some pictures that I've been sending to my coach. Um, some videos and whatnot being 15 weeks out. I start this prep pretty lean. I want to say I was around 10% body fat. In my opinion, I was around 10% body fat. And to get into that, I want to talk about the three ways that I've been measuring body fat. So number one, uh, I have been using a body weight scale by Vanity Planet. And number two, this in-body test that I took 
um, uses bioelectrical impedance to measure your body fat. And number three, I'm using my coach, just my coach's like experience, his vision, whatever, to tell me what body fat I'm at. So number one is my body weight scale. Um, it shows me my body fat. Uh, I mean, uh, I mean, just <laughs> it shows me my body fat. So uh, basically, it uses like biological impedance and whatnot. Um, you guys can search up what biological impedance is. I really like. I don't need. Uh, no, I don't have enough time to research what the fuck biological impedance is and what it does and yada yada yada. Um, so my scale uses that as a way to measure somebody's body fat. Um, it says that I range from anywhere from seven to eight percent body fat. Uh, the second way is my coach. I am relying on his vision, his experience to tell me what body fat I'm at. He tells me I'm at 10% uh, body fat right now, currently right now. Um, so yeah, um, the third way that I'm measuring, that I measured body fat is his in-body um, test. Uh, I actually took this test, I actually took this test like, a while ago it was the 19th of February so was that about three weeks ago I took this test three weeks ago and it said my body fat was at 4% body fat so pretty pretty low pretty damn low on the uh, in body test um, so what this just what this goes to show you is that I can take as many body fat tests in the world like I, I can I can take like 10 body fat tests and each one will give me a different number. There's no accurate way to test your body fat. Um, somebody can look at me and tell me that I'm 12%. Somebody can look at me and tell me I'm like 6%, 7 8 20 whatever. Like everybody has their own opinion and so do these machines. They have their own formulas and whatnot to tell you what body fat that you're at. The best advice that I can give to you is choose one way to measure your body fat and stick to that. Um, in my opinion, I would say that I'm around 7 or 8%. Um, my coach's opinion says that I'm around 10%. Um, I'm going to go with my coach's opinion because he has the experience, he has the vision, he's the one that's coaching me. And be honest, that's higher than what I think. And if it's higher, I want to get it down lower. So. I uh, I want to aim pretty high here, so I'm gonna go with 10%. Something in me is telling me, ah, oh, nah, bro. Like I'm, I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit lower than 10%. Uh, I definitely think you know seven or eight percent. Just my obliques are like they're coming in really crisp. My obliques are coming in real crisp. Uh, lower abs, they're coming in. The lower ab veins, they're coming in. The vascular, they're coming in. But I'm gonna stick to 10%. And um, I mean, pretty much my scale is probably around the body fat percentage that I'm saying I'm at, you know, around 7 or 8%. Um, so, so, like I said, you could use any body fat test or formula or whatever as long as you stick to that formula. So, if my coach, if I ask my coach, what body fat do you think I'm at now? And he says 8%. Or what, what body fat do you think I'm at now? 6%. What body fat do you think I'm at now? 4%. As long as it's going down in a positive or a negative direction, then we're good. If my scale, if my body weight scale goes down from 7 to 6 to 5 to 4 to 3 to 1, then it's good. Then we're making progress. That's it. That's all that really matters. Um, my goal is to get my coach to say I'm around 6 to 8%. Um, well, maybe not 8%, maybe, maybe 6%. Uh, I want to say around 6%. My goal is to get my coach to say around 6% body fat. Um, I asked him, how many pounds do you think I need to lose? He said uh, 10 to 12. So that puts me at 134 pounds to 136 pounds. Um, I know that sounds like a like a really small weight, but I've been at 136 pounds before. Actually, the first time that I've uh, started this series, I went down to 136 pounds, starting from 146 to 136. So I know, I know I can get there. Um, I definitely know I have a lot more muscle than I did back then. I mean, I work out consistently. I haven't like I don't take long breaks from the gym. Um, I, I definitely know, you know, my strength has definitely gone up. I'm way stronger than, than the guy, 
I'm, I'm way stronger than the guy who first started this series. I'm, I'm way stronger than I was before. Uh, so, yeah, I know I look a lot better. Um, but, yeah, um, when it comes to... So, like I said, I started this prep off, like, really, like, already pretty lean. Um, and I did it on purpose, but that kind of came with a cost because I didn't really gain that much strength. Um, my strength standards are like just um, the same as they were last year, just a little bit more. Um, I used to hit 225 for uh, four sets of two last year, and now I'm hitting 225 uh, four sets of three this year. Um, and I mean that that's always been like my goal, especially at my weight. Um, you know, being 140, 150 pounds, um, my one rep max is 240. So bench pressing, you know, 100 pounds above your body weight. I mean, I think that's pretty impressive. Um, so yeah, that that's always kind of been my goal for a long time. It's just hit 225, but now I'm hitting it uh, a couple of times, and my one rep max is 100 pounds above my body weight. So I like that. That's good. Um, I think maybe I might work on my strength next year, but uh, this year I just really wanted to um, make it as easy as possible for me to get lean. I know that sounds like, you know, like, yeah, this shit's not easy, you know. Uh, I just wanted to uh, have, I just wanted to start at a good place, basically. Um, so, um, so in the beginning clip, I gave you guys my uh, my week one macros. They were at like 375 grams of carbs. Life was good. I was going to bed full. I was eating Swedish fish, Sour Patch Kids. I dropped four pounds. Life was good, you know. Um, <laughs> and now my carbs are at 120 to 175. So from 375 to 120 to 175, I mean, that's a pretty big drop, uh, around 200 over 200 grams of carbs already dropped from there. Um, the cardio went from three sessions a week at uh, 350 calories, moderate steady state cardio to now five times a week at 400 calories um, a session. So, wait, did I? Yeah, yeah, five times a week, 400 calories a session. Um, so yeah, the cardios went up, macros went down drastically. Uh, so yeah, I'm pretty upset <laughs> about that. And with that being said, um, I've already like, like 1500. So my calories are at 15 to 1600 right now. Um, that was like when I was just dieting myself, that was what I would like end at. That's why I would just like, okay, I'm not going anywhere below 1500. Like, I'm not like, nah, not me, you know, because I deal with a lot of uh, cravings and hunger. Um, I mean, I, I get easily irritated and angry and I'm just like, eh, let me, you know, <laughs> it's probably not good. Like it just, just no, nah, the, the energy is low, fatigue high, like it's, yeah. Um, so for me being at 1500, like so early on, like I have like 15 more weeks to go and more than likely, like my macros would probably drop even more than that. Um, so yeah, with that being said, I've already messed up twice. Um, I've already messed up twice and um, I messed up. So the first way I messed up is just like me just going over my carbs um, a couple of days out of the week, um, one week and then two. It's like, I have one refeed week. I mean, I have one refeed day a week uh, my coach gave me 305 grams of carbs to eat, and I went way over. I ate 500 grams of carbs, um, and yeah, you know, I, I uh, it, it it was kind of just like, okay, this isn't like, you, you know, like if I was just doing this just for like a lifestyle change, just because I wanted to, it wouldn't be that big of a deal. Cause I just be like, nah, whatever. I, you know, I got time. What you know, whatever. Uh, a little cheat day here and there, yeah, it might set me back like half a pound or so, like, you know, or, or a pound, whatever, it'll, it'll just come right off. But since we're like in a time crunch here, and it would be best to like get me shredded like before the competition even starts, um, that'd be the best thing to do. So the lean, the, 
the shredder er the are are the so yeah so I've already messed up uh, like twice I'm not gonna say like I I messed up like a lot man like no nah, I don't um I've been doing this for a long time and I'm not here to say like I'm perfect you, you know or like I stick to my macros every fucking day or you know I eat what I'm supposed to eat like no nah, there there's been some days where um where like it reminded me like how the diet gets um it's like once you eat one thing then your brain starts telling you oh i think you should like go over maybe one or 200 calories maybe it'll stop you from getting hungry and then you then you start eating and then the floodgates open and then before you know it you're like a thousand calories over your goal um so yeah um when it comes to falling off track look when it comes to falling off track get back on it like you need to get back but just don't get back you, you know like at the same like mentality that you were at like you need to get back and you need to go harder like that like yeah the secret is to get back up and to get back on track but not only do you need to get that not only do you need to get back and get back on track but you need to get back on track and go at it harder um that's what i found it's you need to learn from your mistakes and you need to apply that the you know next thing i want to talk about is weight loss plateaus a lot of people have this problem you know weight loss plateaus they've been at the same weight for like a while and they don't know why they're sticking to their macros they're doing everything right um i want to talk about weight loss plateaus because this that that's one of the main things why i didn't want to like upload uh these videos because like i felt like i wasn't making progress like i kept on like seeing these same numbers like four pounds like a range of like four pounds from like 148 to like 152 and like when i would hit 152 i'm like what the fuck like that's the way that i started at. i made no progress at all and i'm just like is this thing even working will i will i even lose weight um but and 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 the way that that works is just like like as soon as I saw 146, like I was just like, all right, cool, we're back on track. Now I can like make the video, show these guys that you know I'm making progress and whatnot. But it's just, bro, like the emotions that come with the weight, like that come with the number on a scale every day. It's, it can like it can ruin my day. It can definitely ruin my day. I know people say like, you know, don't let the number on a scale ruin your day. It ruins my day, <laughs> like it does. And I'll be lying if I told you, man, I don't pay attention to the, to the, to the number on the scale. I look at how I look. Like, I mean, yeah, sometimes like you look at yourself and then like you see a number on the scale and you're just like, mm, that's not even right. You know, um, there, there are times like that, but there are times where you see the number on the scale and you're like, oh, damn, yeah, I can kind of see it a little bit. Um, there, there'll be like times when I wake up and I'd be like, oh, hell yeah, I'm about to see, like, the lowest number of this prep. You know, I'm already looking a little bit leaner, you know what I mean? And then it'll just hit me with year 152. And I'll be like, damn, the same way I started at. That's crazy. Like, you, you know, you, you start you start interrogating yourself. You start thinking, like, what did I eat? Um, did, did, did I go over it? Did I forget to track something? Did I do this? Did I not do that? Did, like, I did everything right? You know, did I eat too much salt? Did I not drink enough water? Um, so that was like my emotions during plateaus or during that plateau I think it was just like this one big plateau that I had um, and I was just like what am I not doing right and um, even my coach he uh, he kept on like dropping my calories because he didn't see the weight on the scale go down until um, till we finally got to these current macros and then we started to see um, some pretty good changes so so the way that it happened, it was, um, it's like my weight, it fluctuates a lot. Um, I remember the other day I was, I stepped on a scale, I was 148 pounds. Stepped on, stepped on it the next day, I was 151 pounds. I'm like, how the hell, how the hell did I go up, what, like two, three, three pounds, like three pounds, like how do I go up three pounds? And then after that, Boom, drop down to 147. I'm like, what? Drop down four pounds? What? Go up three, drop down four. Like, it's, it, like, you know, I don't know. <laughs> it, it's like, it, it's beyond me. Like, really, like, fluctuations are just beyond me. Um, 
But yeah, they're, they're just fluctuations and you got to tell yourself that it's just fluctuations and you're doing everything right. And if you don't think that, that you're doing any everything right, then I mean, you could take drastic measures and eat the same thing every day. But tracking your calories and hitting the same calories and macros every day is already enough um, to eat the same thing every day. That becomes restrictive. And trust me, in the long run, in the long run, for me, I would fuck up way more, like a lot more times than I've already fucked up. There's only twice. <laughs> I'm saying it like I did like a lot, but um, yeah. Um, a pattern that I've noticed about my, about my body when it comes to plateaus is this theory called the whoosh effect. So the whoosh effect, basically what it is, is that once you start to lose fat, your body starts to fill up those fat cells with water. And once those, okay, so, so you have this fat cell, you're losing weight, it shrinks, and then that adds up to you losing like two pounds on a scale. The body doesn't like empty space, so it fills up those fat cells that shrunk with water to fill them up back to their original size. Fills back up, you go back up to your original weight, original weight, or maybe even higher. Once the body realizes that, hey, I'm not getting any more body fat, it releases the water and then you drop down like a couple of pounds, like three or four pounds. Um, this particular one, like I, I was 151.2, 149.6, 148.8, 149.4, and then boom, 147. It just goes up, down, up, down, boom. Like, it's weird. Um, and I could, I, I mean, like, I would love to upload, I would love to, like, somehow upload um, my weight so that you guys could, like, see, like, my fluctuations and whatnot. But as long as we're going in a positive direction, then we're all good. Um, but yeah, um, to validate the whoosh effect, and this is why I like to believe in the whoosh effect, because not only, this doesn't, this happens to me every time I lose weight, actually. I will see the same number on that scale. Either I will see the same number on the scale, or, or I will see, like, numbers close to it. So, like, let's say, like, it's 146.2. Last year, it, you know, or, like, every year that I try and diet down, I always see the same number on the scale. 146.2, 146.2, and it will be like 146.2 for like a week. And then boom, three pounds down. So to validate that theory, uh, my mother had told me about uh, a surgery that she had to remove her hernia. So she got her hernia removed and a couple of weeks go by and then she notices that like, hey, you know, it's come back. She tries to feel it. It's not as um, hard as it was, but it's, you know, it's soft. So she goes back to the doctor, wonders, you know, what it is. The doctor said, oh, I made a mistake. I forgot to patch, you know, I forgot to patch it up um, where he took out the hernia. So the doctor goes in and he drains out that area. And what, what was in that area was water. The body doesn't like empty space. So whatever empty space that you have in your body, it fills it up with water. Um, you know, like you run into a lot of problems when air gets inside of your body or in between your organs. It causes pain, it causes discomfort. Um, so I just want to show you guys some physique updates. I'm just going to show you guys a couple of photos that I took uh, that I've been sending to my coach, some videos that I've been taking. This is what I'm looking like 15 weeks out. We're at 10% body fat right now. Uh, weight's at 146.6, six pounds down, pretty much. Well, no, well, it's not six pounds now, it's like five point something. But whatever, whatever, man. It's, uh, in, in my eyes, is in my eyes, in my math, it's six, it's six pounds down. So, 152 to 146, whatever. <laughs> um, it's six pounds down. Uh, this is week six, so we're, we're, we're trucking along a pound a week. That's good. Uh, so yeah, uh, hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. I'll try and keep you guys more updated as this prep goes on. 
uh, I'll try to be more consistent. I'll try not to get so emotional when it, when it comes to to the to weight on the scale. And uh, just stop, just stop feeling like I can't share things with you guys. Almost, um, you know, I I need more content on my channel. Um, and these, th this is this is one thing that I told myself, you, you know, like way back. I was just like, okay. I'm gonna do this series and I'm gonna upload it and it's gonna help out a lot of people. They're gonna see me change and it's gonna inspire some people and that's exactly what I wanted to do. So another test that I took because these weight loss plateaus were really like bugging me um, was this RMR test, this rest and metabolic test. Um, so I went to Old Dominion University, the same university I dropped out of. And I took the RMR test and what a rest and metabolic rate is, it's how many calories your body is burning at rest with doing nothing. Hypothetically speaking, if you were in a coma in a hospital, this is how many calories they would be feeding you in order to keep your organs running and your body alive. And um, yeah, so these results say uh, my RMR is 1663. So that would be, so that's 1663 calories. That's how many calories my body burns at rest. Um, on the back here has a nice little uh, chart for you. Shows me my daily total caloric needs by estimate. So this is how many calories I would have to eat to maintain my weight according to my activity. Little to no activity, 1996, birth year. Uh, light exercise one to three t days a week, uh, 2287. Light exercise one to three times a week. Um, I figured, you know, like you go to the gym, you know, just like to fuck around at the gym. You probably don't do cardio. Uh, moderate intensity three to five days a week, 2578. Um, I like to think that um, that you're, you know, you're pretty serious. I don't know. That you uh, that you have a plan set in place. Um, you do some cardio some days. Uh, moderate to vigorous six to seven days a week. Twenty eight sixty nine. Um, I definitely think this is where I'm at. Twenty eight sixty nine because um, before this, well, you guys already know like my calories are pretty high when I started. Like it was at like twenty seven twenty eight hundred and I lost weight, um, and that was because I like my activity was pretty vigorous um you know working out like six or seven days a week and doing cardio um also i'm a firefighter like so there's there's one thing having an active job you know like i don't work just a, a regular desk job i mean there's a lot of downtime in my job but uh most of the time i'm on my feet uh vigorous daily training um my coach actually set my calories to be 3100 and um, my weight really wouldn't it wouldn't budge that much so um see i i know like in my off season it was between 28 and uh 3100 but uh right now right right now like my weight is acting like it's like right now if i had to guess like i'm just i'm just guessing right now like i would have to say it's at like 2300 um, just like playing around with it like I think it's around 2300 because when you diet down your metabolism slows down when you diet so yeah um, so I, I took the rest of the metabolic test got in this little bubble laid down there for like 10 minutes and um, just waited for my test results um, this is just because I was just like it confused me because I was just like why are my calories so low this early on in order for me to drop weight and um, I mean the real, I mean the, the answer to that question is just because during my bulk or you know my gaining phase, like like I said, I just I just really like controlled my weight. I didn't let my body fat get up too high. If it did, I would like cut calories drastically. Um, so I mean, in turn, that even like messed up my metabolism a little bit, and um, probably. My metabolism would probably be a little bit higher, but you know, um, it wouldn't really make much sense because my body fat would be higher too. All right. <clears throat>
So I want to talk about some injuries that I've been having as well. Uh, so I've been running five five times a week, burning 400 calories on a treadmill. I just I just go on any treadmill and just run so it says 400. Um, and I've been doing eight miles per hour, so that's about a seven seven and and a half minute pace, um, and that's around three miles. Uh, I completed around 23, 24 minutes or so. Um, that's just because, like, if you're doing math, you're like, oh, well, that's like 22, 22, 21 minutes. Like, wh what are you talking about? Like, no, nah, I, I take a break at like 300 calories or so, and I walk a little bit, let my heart rate recover, and then I run again. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah. Um, so, the injury that I've been having, it's been my knee. Um, it's been bothering me for about, it bothered me the first three weeks. It's gone away now, but I think it was just like doing no cardio at all and then just jumping in and just doing like lots of cardio. Like my, my knee probably just like, probably was just in shock from it. Um, I've just been putting some icy hot on it and I just ran through it. Like, I know I should have rested, or I know I should have probably took a pain pill, but I didn't. Um, that's, like, the smartest thing that you can do is probably rest, take an Advil or leave or whatever to relieve the pain. And um, when it comes to, like, to, uh, to pains like that, like knee pain from running so much, the best thing that you can do is maybe, like, rest one or two days and just take a pain pill, and it'll probably go away. But uh, I know, like, with me, like, I, like, the way my head works, man, I, I, I don't like pain pills. Um, I'd rather do Icy Hot and just, like, just fight through it, really. <clears throat> Another thing that's been happening is wrist pain. Um, I'm about to start investing in some wrist straps. Um, so I'm about to start investing in some wrist straps, and I really think it's just from uh, overhead presses and bench pressing. A lot of heavy weight um, puts a lot of stress on my bones. Like I can feel it. it you know, it's it's my bone. It's not it's not a muscle that's like strained. Like I I feel joints. Like I I feel it in my joint. Like my joint is like hurting. Uh, so yeah. Um, it's uh, like I know it's not broken. At least I don't think so. I'm over here going like this. <laughs> Probably it might be broken. Um, but no, nah, if it was broken, I probably wouldn't be doing that. Uh, but it has hurt, you know, it, it, it hurts pretty bad, but, um, yeah, I mean, I don't know what to do. You, you know, I'm afraid to take pain medicine, I'm afraid to rest. I don't know, I, I'm just fighting through it, so I'm going to invest in some wrist straps. Um, but that's another thing, I just want to touch on injuries just because I know that dieting down, being at a lower body weight, having a little body fat, puts you at more risk of injury, especially when you're not eating you know, enough. There was times in the past, I remember I was sore, but like, not like sore, like, oh, I had a good workout, but like, no, dude, like, I would wake up every day sore, no matter if I work, it was, it was mainly my legs, um, maybe, you know, just because of so much running, and that was when I was like 136 pounds, and I'm about to go back to that shit, um, I just remember being sore every day, I would wake up, out of bed and my legs would just feel sore. Um, my arms would feel a little bit sore, but it was just, it was kind of, it almost felt like a whole, like muscle, like, you know, like almost every muscle had a little bit of soreness to it. As if like, I just had like, the hardest workout ever. Um, but yeah, uh, but yeah, um, it comes to that, I mean, I'm in a competition. I just gotta, kind of just gotta fight through it, you know? Uh, so with that being said, I'm going to invest in some wrist straps, and uh, yeah.